Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Today I want to talk about Tatooine because there's no end to the joys that desert planets provide us. Specifically, I want to discuss Tatooine's layout in broad terms, meaning the locations of its major cities and other points of interest. And I want to give some info about each of them as well. Why am I doing this video? Well, as part of my research for the videos I've done on the Book of Boba Fett, I found myself continually trying to grasp where all of the important locations on Tatooine are relative to one another. And it's been a bit of a struggle. So I said to myself, damn it, I'll just do it myself. We'll do it live! Now, as an outer rim planet, it's understandable that the maps made of Tatooine's terrain are unreliable. I don't think that many denizens of the planet care much about where one thing is respective of another. It's a planet full of tribes and isolated cities. Actually, if the Empire had never taken an interest in Tatooine, I doubt we'd have any maps available to us at all. We'd be stuck with only the knowledge that it's a desert planet some 43,000 light years from the core of the galaxy in a part of the outer rim that's just beyond the mid rim in a region called the Slice, and that it has two suns, three moons, and is 10,465 kilometers in diameter, or roughly 82% of the Earth's size. Okay, scientists may also be able to gather from afar that Tatooine's terrain is made up largely of canyons, mountains, rocky bluff, and of course, desert. A desolate expanse that well hides the planet's ancient surface, which was covered in ocean and rainforest. However, what few are able to discern is its specific points of interest, and that's what we're going to try and do now. And to do so, we'll be employing the use of this map from Star Wars Locations, an official publication of Lucasfilm, though the book is a bit dated, having been released in 2016. Do note, this map does not portray all of Tatooine, but only its inhabitable portion, which consists of the planet's northern hemisphere. We start at the very top center of the map, where three cities are located between the Zelric Draw, a shallow, wide mouth canyon to the west, and the northern Dune Sea to the east. The first of the three cities is the de facto capital of Tatooine, Mos Espa, which sits just northwest of the Mospic High Range, a rocky, mountainous region which contains some of the highest mountains on the planet. Mos Espa, as most of you already know, is a major spaceport settlement that is known for its wide variety of business and entertainment, as well as for being run on and by organized crime. It's the home of the Mos Espa Grand Arena, which is famous for its world-class pod racing and the high-stakes gambling it entails. It was also home to the slave boy Anakin Skywalker and his mother Shmi. Then, just southeast of Mos Espa is the city of Mos Entha, History books say little of this city, but supposedly in the time of the Galactic Empire's reign, Jabba the Hutt was known to keep slave pens here. Next, directly east of Mos Espa, and just south of a dry riverbed known as Beggar's Canyon, is Mos Taika, the third of the Tri-City Settlements. History also records little of this city, but legends tell of its famous bar called the Third Sun Cantina, which became a hugely popular spot for both denizens of Mos Taika, as well as for passing travelers, including soldiers of both the Empire and the Alliance to Restore the Republic. Now we head eastward into the Northern Dune Sea, a segment of the Dune Sea, which is the name for the expanse of desert that stretches across habitable Tatooine. In between its seemingly eternal sections of nothing but sand, there are some points of note in the northern Dune Sea, such as the Bantha Plains, a region heavily populated with wild banthas. If you're not a fervent bantha chaser like myself, though, you'll probably be more interested to learn that Jabba, or Boba's Palace, is located in the southern portion of the northern Dune Sea, on the northern edge of the Great Mesra Plateau. This should come as a surprise for any of you out there who have seen this map, probably the most popularly disseminated map of Tatooine on the internet, which situates Jabba's palace to the very southwest corner of Tatooine civilization in what should be the middle of the Western Dune Sea. Yeah, based on everything we know, that's completely wrong. But I digress. As I spoke about in my previous video, the former abode of Jabba the Hutt was originally built by the Bomar monks to serve as a monastery within which they could carry out their bizarre religious practices in peace. Far southeast of Jabba's palace, also on the edge of the Great Mesra Plateau, at the southern limit of the northern Dune Sea, 
sits the great pit of Carcoon, where Jabba loved to take his enemies so that he could drop them into the pit where an adult Sarlacc was waiting to devour them. It was also the site of the Battle of the Great Pit of Carcoon during the Galactic Civil War. Next, we cross south over the Great Mesra Plateau, and after some 40 kilometers or so, we're in a valley where we find the spaceport city of Mos Eisley, the largest settlement on Tatooine, and the planet's closest thing to a cosmopolitan metropolis. Mos Eisley is the location of Chalman's spaceport cantina, where a young Luke Skywalker and his mentor Obi-Wan Kenobi met legendary pilot Han Solo and his flying companion Chewbacca. Next, we continue south from Mos Eisley and enter the southeastern extreme of the Junlin Wastes, a dry, rocky region littered with canyons that separates the northern Dune Sea from the western Dune Sea. Junland means no man's land in native speak, as one is unlikely to find much life in this exceedingly hot region. Though, Tusken raiders have been known to roam there and attack lost travelers, who they probably fear will permit themselves to feast on the black melons which grow in the waste and provide Tuskens with a constant source of milk. The southeastern extreme of the Wastes is a region known as the Great Chot Salt Flats, an expanse composed of a mix of clay and sodium-rich sand blown over from the western Dune Sea. The Salt Flats contain a number of significant places. First, some 80 kilometers south of Mos Eisley is the city of Anchorhead, one of Tatooine's first settlements and an outpost for the moisture farmers in the area. Anchorhead was also a site that, during his youth, Luke Skywalker would frequent with his friends, as the Lars family moisture farm, also known as the Lars homestead, where he was raised, was located in the Salt Flats, probably only about 25 kilometers to the southwest of the city. Finally, on the outskirts of Anchorhead lies Tosh Station, a power and distribution station that provides power to Anchorhead and a number of other surrounding locales. Going back to Mos Eisley, if rather than go south from the city, we head to the far west, into the Junlin Waste, some 70 to 80 kilometers or so, and passing by the small village of Arnthet on the way, we get to the city of Bestine, a popular stop-off for travelers headed to Mos Eisley. Bestine began as a small mining and farming community, but eventually grew into a thriving hub of commerce. This evolution was helped along when the Galactic Empire invaded Tatooine, occupied Bestine, and turned it into the nucleus of imperial power on the planet. The Empire considered Bestine to be the capital of Tatooine, not Mos Espa. If we now continue slightly northwest from Bestine, another 50 kilometers or so, we arrive at the former location of Ben Kenobi's house, just south of the Zelric Draw and the Tri-City region, inclusive of Mos Espa, Mos Taika, and Mos Entha. For context, Kenobi's house, which sat on a cliff on the eastern edge of Hubba Heights, an extremely rocky region northwest of the Junlin Wastes, was located 136 kilometers from the Lars homestead. Now we cross back south over the Junlin Wastes, go about 40 to 50 kilometers, and end up at the limits of a city named Mos El Rey, of which we know nothing about, but which sits rather isolated on the southwest edge of the Wastes, where it abuts the eastern end of the western Dune Sea. If, however, we head northwest from Ben Kenobi's house instead of south, we move into Hubba Heights, to the north of which we find the Jawa Mountain Fortress, which served as a hub of trade for the Jawas during the Galactic Civil War, and east of which is the Zelric Draw and the Tri-City region, where we began. We're not quite done yet, though, because there's a few cities that we know exist, but which we do not know the location of, most notably among them, Mos Pelgo a town which was briefly known as Freetown after local lawman Cobb Vanth freed it from the control of the Mining Collective, a mining firm that forced the townspeople to endure hard labor. Mos Pelgo was also, of course, close to the location where Vanth, Mandalorian bounty hunter Din Djarin, and a band of Tusken Raiders and other allies slew a crate dragon that had been terrorizing the area and killing its livestock. Now, during Season 2 of The Mandalorian, Din Djarin visited Peli Mato's hangar at Mos Eisley Spaceport, and while there, he asked for directions to Mos Pelgo, and she brought up a map of Tatooine in order to help him. This is a map of Tatooine before the war. You got Mos Eisley, Mos Espa, and up around this region, Mos Pelgo. Look how far she spun the map to locate Mos Pelgo. I mean, Tatooine is only inhabitable in its northern hemisphere, and she seemed to have gone well beyond it. When we see the map of where Pelgo is supposed to be, though, it's blank, because the city is little known to the people of Tatooine, let alone off-worlders like us. 
However, what we do know is that it's really far from Mos Eisley, and that it's located in a fairly flat region. It's definitely isolated, as a cantina bartender there told Mando that they don't get many visitors. Thus, my best guess is that Mos Pelgo is located in the western Dune Sea, where little civilization exists. Though, I could also see it being to the extreme south, a hundred or so kilometers west of Anchorhead. Next and last, beyond Mos Pelgo, we also know of a Mos Zabu and a Mos Doba, both cities of some sort, but we have no idea where either is located. Anyways, that's my breakdown of Tatooine's layout. I hope this was helpful and interesting to you. If it was, please do give the video a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know anything I got wrong or missed. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit that damn notification bell so you don't miss a damn thing. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.